the stealth fighter plane that is faster than the SR-71. As a replacement for the Lockheed U-2, Convair developed a number of designs that ultimately led to the construction of the Kingfish reconnaissance aircraft. In a 1959 contest for the Project Oxcart mission, Kingfish faced fourth against the Lockheed A-12 and came up short. Want to know more? Hey guys, welcome to our channel, Future Warplanes, where we tell you about military fighter jets, military drones, and military planes, from the currently famous in the air to the most advanced around the world. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. And before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. And let's begin! Even though the Convair Kingfish was created in the 1950s, it is still mostly unknown. What is known is that the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird specifications were met by the spy plane concept known as the Kingfish. The U-2, which was already doing reconnaissance flights over the Soviet Union, was to be replaced by one of the two aircraft that were developed to compete. U.S. government officials worried that the U-2 would not be able to withstand Soviet air defenses for more than a few years, even before it entered service. When Gary Powers was shot down in the heart of Soviet territory in 1960, these worries came true. The ease with which Soviet radar stations could follow the U-2 was one of the factors that made it so susceptible. Several investigations by Lockheed and the government came to the conclusion that the best approach to solve this issue was to create a new aircraft flying at extremely high altitudes and supersonic speeds with the smallest radar cross-section, or RCS. Lockheed and Convair were each extended invitations by the Central Intelligence Agency, or CIA, to take part in a project to create a U-2 replacement in late 1957. The Lockheed team, headed by Clarence Kelly Johnson, studied a number of novel concepts before settling on a very conventional design that was meant to cruise at Mach 3, at a height of 90,000 feet. Bob Widmer and Vincent Dolson of Convair led a more unconventional strategy. The B-58 Hustler supersonic bomber, which Convair was developing for the Air Force, served as the inspiration for the original design of the aircraft. The B-58 had a large external pod underneath the center line and had delta to wings, as is depicted below. A nuclear weapon would usually be in this pod. The B-58B Super Hustler, an enhanced variant of this aircraft, was suggested to the Air Force in 1957. In order to replace the external pod with another parasitic aircraft, the B-58B was designed to be quicker and larger than the original B-58. The three ramjet engines on this parasite vehicle would be started once it was carried into the air at a speed of over Mach 2 at an altitude of at least 35,000 feet, or about 10,670 meters. After being air launched from the B-58B mothership, the parasite would then accelerate to even higher speeds in preparation for its mission. There were supposed to be two main components to the Super Hustler parasite. Two people made up the first component, a manned vehicle, while an independent, expendable, unmanned vehicle made up the second. Although this unmanned component was initially intended to be a bomber containing a nuclear warhead, it could also carry extra fuel to increase the combined range of the two components. Because of these capabilities, the parasite attracted interest as a potential reconnaissance aircraft. The manned component's wingspan was 18.75 feet and it had a length of 46.58 feet. It weighed roughly 10,500 pounds. The two crew members were seated side by side as a single Marquardt RJ-59 ramjet engine of the ship generated 10,000 pound of thrust at Mach 3 and 5,000 pound of thrust at Mach 4. Additionally, a tiny turbojet engine was fitted to the vehicle to offer additional power during landing when the vehicle would be moving too slowly for the ramjet to work. The fuselage nose was also built to tilt downward for better visibility during landing, much like the Concorde, and it was also outfitted with a wheeled nose gear and a skid main gear configuration, both taken from the X-15. The vehicle's expendable part, on the other hand, measured 48.75 feet in length, with wings that were 23.33 feet wide and weighed around 25,300 pounds. In order for this component to be freed from the manned vehicle and take off on its own while delivering its nuclear payload, it was additionally powered and equipped with two Marquardt RJ-59 ramjets. Unfortunately, this unmanned vehicle had no landing gear because it was expendable. To withstand the extreme heat produced at Mach 4, the Parasite's two pieces were designed to be made of titanium, stainless steel, and pyroserum, a ceramic substance. Due to the temperature, it was also necessary to cover the cockpit windows with a number of heat protection shields and install television cameras to allow the crew to see the outside world. The manned and expendable components had to be attached to the launch aircraft in an unusual way. Due to the B-58 
B's limited bottom capacity. With its tail attached to the unmanned component's nose behind it, the human vehicle was positioned in front. After being coupled with the B-58, the entire assembly would take off from a regular runway and ascend to the air. Nearly 4,260 kilometers from its intended target, the Super Hustler Parasite was to be launched. To enable the three ramjet engines to fire during launch, the parent aircraft would accelerate to a speed of Mach 2. The parasite would be released and climbed to its cruise height of 75,000 and Mach 4 once the ramjets were operating at maximum power. As it got closer to the target, the core would soar to a height of 90,000 feet. After releasing the unmanned component, the human portion was supposed to return to base, slow down, start its turbojet engine, and land on a regular runway. Even though the Air Force showed some interest in a modified B-58, the Parasite bomber was deemed unworkable and obtained no government financing. The B-58B bomber's development was still growing forward, but the CIA's need for a supersonic reconnaissance aircraft caused the Parasite concept to change. The Parasite design was revised by Bob Widmer and Vincent Dolson of Convair, who gave it a new name, the FISH. The FISH was to be carried by a modified version of the B-58B Super Hustler with a stretched fuselage, more powerful engines, and carrying an additional crewman to launch the Parasite. The FISH itself was changed from the initial Parasite design and turned into a single manned vehicle as opposed to distinct manned and unmanned components. The FISH's lifting body fuselage shape allowed it to travel to a high speed of Mach 4.2 at a maximum altitude of 90,000 feet and a maximum range of 3,900 nautical miles. The FISH's Mach 4 Plus dash over the target was powered by two of the same Marquardt ramjets that would have been utilized on the Parasite earlier. In order to return and land on its own, the FISH was also supposed to be fitted with two turbojets. Pyroceramic would have been used to make the nozzles of the engines and the leading edges of the wings in order to resist high temperatures and absorb radar radiation for increased stealth. The FISH idea was a dangerous one because it called for a launching from a mother plane that did not yet exist and relied on experimental ramjet engines. In fact, studies by Convair engineers revealed that the FISH was too heavy for the B-58B to reach the Mach 2.2 speeds required for the ramjet engine to be ignited, and it had yet to be demonstrated that the B-58B launch platform could. But in June 1959, when the Air Force completely canceled the B-58B, it was all but over. In light of this choice, the fish concept was all but lost, though it was investigated turning the B-58A into a viable mother plane. Although the B-58A was smaller and slower than the B, it was thought that the upgrading the earlier aircraft would be impossible due to its high cost and technical challenges. The practical difficulty of the parasite notion was another criticism leveled against it. The Super Hustler fish plan was rendered unworkable as a result of these problems, but Lockheed's rival design was also unworkable because its RCS remained significantly higher than desired. When the design teams were instructed to try again in July 1959, both the Convair and Lockheed plans were turned down. Convair was hired to create a replacement design without the unsettling ramjet engines and mother plane needed for the fish, while Lockheed continued to develop its concept by looking for ways to reduce RCS. Also promoted was the adoption of the J-58 turbo ramjet engine by both companies. And that ends today's episode. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please subscribe and leave a comment below. And don't forget to like today's video and we'll see you next time.